Hi again. I came across a car this week that I thought would make for an interesting video. We received um, a delivery of cars and I went out and did the initial field, you know, initial car inspection and nothing was out of the ordinary with any of the cars. Uh, a day or two later we bring those cars, we release empties and bring this string of cars over, put them underneath the towers and drop the gangways and we are starting to do, go take car readings so that we can offload the next day. And I cut the seal on this particular car, pull the pin, raise the lid and immediately I'm hit with the smell of odorized propane. So I just wait there for a couple seconds and Pretty soon the smell just goes away. So I finish uh, opening the lid all the way, get it out, you know, where it's safely leaning back and put the pin back into the hinges and I bend down and I can't really smell any propane inside the housing. I thought now would be a really good time to just go get my electronic gas detector and some spray leak detector and let's see if there's anything to find. So uh, I've got two videos where I did that and then I ended up shooting a third video and ended up taking some pictures. So um, what I did is I, I told the guy working with me, hey, just stay away from this car. Let's don't do anything to disturb it. Let's see if there actually is a problem or not. So I go there and I come back and run the sniffer and sure enough it goes off in actually four places three of them ended up being at the two inch plugs going in the valves and you'll you'll see that on the video and then it did go off a little bit not very strong but it went off and was um uh, the gas detector has a tick and the stronger well you can set the sensitivity on it as to how fast the tick is when you start that determines how sensitive this thing is on picking up uh, odorant and so it started going but it was it was increasing in tick speed but not very quickly and so anyway we uh, you'll see it in the video I found the, uh, the three leaks and the fourth one where it was generating some extra ticks was the thermometer well uh, cap so I take the thermometer well cap that's the second video and it shows again that it's what, what it amounts to is it was giving me a false positive and then I show how to how I quickly verified whether that thermometer well was leaking or not and that was to put a small soap bubble over the uh, the thermometer well itself and so you'll get to see that and I was really thinking that's all these video was going to amount to well the next morning we go to hook up the car so we can offload it. Um, oh, and another thing, going back to those three small leaks, the one at each plug, they were not, you'll see it in the video, they are not big leaks, they are not very aggressive leaks, so since I was planning on offloading the car the next day, I saw no point in doing some temporary repairs, you know, like backing the plug off, completely resealing the threads, putting it all back in, simply because it's going to be offloaded the next morning and the leaks just were not uh, aggressive at all. So the next morning I'm working on a, one car, the man working with me, he's, he's working on this car. He takes the plug out of that and it's the A end liquid valve. He takes the plug out, no issue. Takes the plug out of the vapor, no issue. He's starting to take the plug out of the B end liquid and the A end liquid valve starts to begins to self actuate not as aggressively as it did in the one video that I uploaded earlier. So it begins to self actuate and he can hear it coming out so he reaches over and tightens it up. It stops. He goes back to work on the other plug. This self actuates again. He does it and when the third time it does it, he calls for me, I come over, and that's when you'll see the third video. That is, it's a third video if I've got them remembered right how, how I, we're going to 
edit the video after we after I shoot this video. And this one, we had a much harder time. We never fully got it to completely stop all flow. But we were able to get it slow enough to where I could thread in my ESV and hook up a hose and then hook up my nitrogen line so that we could drain this car. And then I shot a uh, series of other pictures because this car ended up having to be OTMA to a shop. And I'm not sure how many of the pictures we're actually going to add to this, but two of the pictures I know for sure that we're going to add into this video is that when it was all done, as far as getting all the liquid out, I had switched my compressors over to recovery was able to shut that A and liquid valve off, shut my hose valve off, drain the connections, and when I took my ESV out, it, w it did not self-actuate again. It stayed closed, but I was personally curious to see whether it had fully seated or not, so I took my spray leak detector, and I sprayed it inside the valve so that I completely coated the seating disc and the seat. So it was you know, pretty full of leak detector. And I once I did all of that, I took a picture of it. You know, once of course, once it calmed down a little bit, took a picture of it. I came back six minutes later, took another picture, and you can see that it is forming a lot of very small, very tight foaming bubbles. And it's actually starting to foam and push some of the leak detector out of the threads. So, like I said, took a picture of that, at that time, during the recovery process, that car had approximately 140 pounds of pressure in it when in that six minute window between the two pictures. So that just to me confirmed that not only is it possibly just the valve packing that junked out, which is my initial conclusion is that the valve packing had failed on that valve, but it's also possible that there's foreign material or some other type of damage between the hard seat and the soft seat in, in the seat on the, the soft part of the seating disc. So went ahead and sealed up the plug with oil, put it in, and then we ran that car in recovery down to zero PSI. Um, while we were also, while I was also doing that, I had some free time and I was thinking, you know what, this car's going to go to a shop. Maybe let's see if there's any other small things that a shop might be able to deal with while the car's down. Uh, the car was last in the shop in 2020, according to the service dates on the side of the car, and it's next scheduled to go into shop in 2026. So this is August of 2022. There is a data tag on this valve, but there's no, there's an, um, the four initial let letters from the initials of the shop where the car went into, uh, G-A-C-A. -A. The packing nut on this particular valve and, and the others appears to be silvery uh, zinc colored like an original valve packing nut on a Midland valve. Not what you would normally expect is the gold collared looking packing nut on when they have a rebuild kit, but uh, there was nothing else to indicate, you know, could have been, could have just been faded or whatever. I don't know, can't confirm that. All I can tell you is what I saw and what I took pictures of. Uh, there was no data on that tag saying that this valve had been rebuilt and with what rebuild kit. So, uh, but they had used paint markers and they had paint markered all of the bolts and the valve packing so that you, if anything had backed off, you could easily tell if something had backed off. I also got a picture of the data plate on the bottom of the valve. Um, but it, I didn't take the time to actually polish and clean it up because it's in, it's in there pretty tight and I could not read um, the date, date code on that valve. Uh, and also I could not find a date code on the car, found no data plate or anything for that car so I'm not sure when the car was built. But anyway, I'm, I'm looking around and I'm looking at the 
liquid valve, the other end liquid valve, which would be the B end liquid valve. And it looks like a hairline crack on one of the spokes on the hand wheel, but it's obscured by some paint. So I chip the paint off, and sure enough, it looks like a crack. So I go down and get a little file, and I file away the what little bit of paint was left, and sure enough, there's a crack that goes completely across the spoke, right where this spoke meets the hub. And so I took a picture of that. I added that into my... Um, OTMA uh, filing, you know, the stuff I, I send in. And then I went ahead and took a piece of yellow caution tape. I applied some gaffer tape to one end and I wrote on that gaffer tape that it's got a crack at the spoke. So I tagged the BN liquid valve and then when I was done I tagged the a and liquid valve with also with caution tape and then I put a piece of gaffer tape on one end of the caution tape and I just wrote down self-actuating valve so it goes to the shop not only does it say in the paperwork which one it is but it's tagged so they can visually see it um, I I think I'm going to um, I believe I uploaded it, but I'll show you the home shop decals and a couple other pictures. So uh, I hope you find this video interesting and informative. Thank you. All right, it is August 10th, 2022. We're working on car GATX 61676. Brought it under the towers, broke the seal to do readings smelled propane fairly strong when I opened up the lid it dissipated quickly I mean I don't see anything obviously wrong I don't see any ice build up somewhere so I went and got the gas detector I'll get it set and then I'll run a sweep Got one on that liquid, probably just a plug. Well, something around the other liquid, but it's not as strong. Let's uh, check over here. Could just be all three of the plugs may have a small leak. Let's give it a shot here.
Yeah, there's not much of a leak on the vapor, but it's there. Really small leak there on the liquid. And another small one on this other liquid. Yeah, well, that's probably all there is, but I'll just spray around the bases here. Well, I say that's it. As far as leaks go, that isn't much at all. Glad we checked it out though. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything special about it. This car will be offloaded tomorrow morning and I have no worries, no concerns about it. Nothing's big enough or bad enough to matter. So just wanted to document it. Same car, we just took the cap off the thermometer well and just going to drop the uh, gas detector down on top of the thermometer well. All right, let's change the sensitivity here. It's possible it's old glycol or something. Let's, uh, I'll see if I can get a film put over it. Yeah, that bubble is not growing. I'm going to call that probably old oil or old glycol or something causing a, a mild false reading on that. So this never hurts to check. That's the only valve that, that, uh, that was leaking. All right, well, this is the A and liquid valve and it started leaking once we took the plug out it started leaking pretty good this has been tightened down what two times or three times three. three times so far so looks like we got a car gonna go to shop that really bites 